Hello, this short example shows how to do calculations for two sample means tests for dependent samples. Um, that is, repeated measurements in the same sample. And we're going to do it both with summarized data, as we did in the example, as well as doing it with the raw data itself, and showing a couple tricks in dealing with raw data in uh, StatCrunch. So, if you're doing summary statistics on improvement, that is the difference between the pre and the post, you're going to do the trail is going to be stat, t statistics, and again because we do not have this, uh, the standard deviation for the population, one sample and with summary. If you're doing it on the raw data, it's going to be stat, t statistics, and paired. So example A, and this is the example that's actually online. Uh, to perform a two dependent test using summary statistics, you need three numbers the mean, the standard deviation, the sample size of the and from the example the improvement was had a mean of 75, a standard deviation of 10.53 and a sample size of 30. So let's see how to do this in, in StatCrunch. Again here we are in StatCrunch, Stat, T-Statistics, one sample with summary. This pops up, fill in the three blanks Sample mean is 75, sample standard deviation is 10.53, and the sample size is 30. Next, hypothesis test, the null mean is 0. Alternative is greater, because we are improving, we're hypothesizing that there is an improvement. That is, the difference between the post and the pre is greater than 0. And calculate. And up pops this. T-statistic is 39.011578, p-value is less than 0.0001. So we conclude that because the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Recall the null hypothesis was there was no improvement. Therefore, we can conclude that there was an improvement, that the post-test minus the pre-test was, on average, greater for, than zero for all the students. Now that's how it looks like when you're doing it with summarized data. Example B, which we're not doing, but which is actually the underlying data for the example online, is we're going to perform it now using the raw data. And here's the data in table form. Um, it's a lot of it. Uh, there's actually three columns worth of data here. And if you look at the actual example, here's the data. I'm going to highlight the data and control C to copy it because when I go into StatCrunch now, click right there on row 1, variable 1, control V, we'll paste it all in. Now if you're a Mac person, it would be command C and command V, but for Windows people it's control C and control V. Now that was a lot easier than typing in all the data, but there's still some things we need to do. We need to get these all into one column for the pretest and one column for the post-test, but we got it scattered across three columns. So I'm going to highlight both of those, control C, go back over there, control V, pasted it. Here, control C, then scroll down to the bottom here, control V. So all my data is now in these first two columns. Now I'm actually going to clean things up a bit by deleting these four columns. To do that we'll go into edit, columns, delete, because I want to delete those columns just to tidy things up. I do not want to delete column var1 or var2, but I do want to delete all the others, so I'll just click on those, select delete, and they're gone. The next thing, that row 1 doesn't have data, so I'm going to edit, row, delete, and it's going to ask me do I want to delete the one selected row, delete the rows, and we're really excited about it because there's an exclamation point there. Notice how everything got moved up. Now what you really do want to do is to go back over the data from here that it matches the data that we actually have loaded into, stat, uh, into StatCrunch, and it does. See how much faster that was than just doing typing it in little by little? So now doing the, t uh, the paired samples t-test, it's under stat, t-statistic, paired, up pops this window. 
sample var2, pretest is located in var1, difference is null mean difference is 0, the alternative is going to be greater than 0, that is the post test is greater than the pretest, and calculate. T statistic is 39.008823, p value again is less than 0 0.0001. Because p is less than our alpha of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the post-tests were higher than the pretests on average. Now, as to whether or not that actually translates into the teacher was effective, that's another question altogether. But we do have statistical evidence that the post-test scores are significantly higher than the pretest scores. And that's really what the student was getting at. Hopefully this was helpful. If not, oh well, this is the end. Send me your questions.